The uh, another thing, same thing. This group looks at why are, why are we where are we having trouble, and, and another spot is um, not trouble, but where do patients suffer the most? So, thank you ATVs for showing us <laughs> all the injuries that you can get, but. People get crushed by ATVs, lots of rib fractures on both sides or in young people or what have you, but there's, um, there's a lot of problems when you break ribs. You can get blood clots, you can get respiratory failure, you can get pneumonia as a secondary problem from that, you can get a popped lung. So we looked at um, having a really dialed method of providing basically good care and analgesia or pain control. Um, to these people and we so we took took a cohort of people before we instituted the multiple rib fracture protocol plus our trauma nurse coordinator and the group just paying a lot of attention so we just really really focused on this as a as a, an initiative so that was the cohort before and then we added this protocol and and just really intensive good care so it, it means the anesthetists are even coming down and seeing the patient here in the emergency department, getting them ready for an epidural, which they place up in the, uh, the PAR, the post-anesthetic recovery room. Um, the nurses being well aware up on the wards that these patients need to be um, treated so well with, their, with pain control, otherwise they fail. The um, occupational therapists, the physiotherapists are vi visiting them you know, numerous times a day to basically badger them and get them, get them breathing well providing them with an incentive, this, it's called an incentive spirometer, which they have to <laughs> suck on this, this little plastic gizmo to make the ball rise. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, what else? ICU care if required. So if they're, if they're looking that bad, they need to go to the step down unit or the ICU to be watched really carefully. And so just doing that, so it's, it's, this, is not, this is not rocket science, this is not, you know, fancy surgery for those ribs, it's just really good care. And we showed that uh, we knocked off um, an average of three days length of stay for these patients. Um, and the best part was that they were compared to about 40%, um, I think it was 40% of the patients went back to the ICU unexpectedly and before we did that intervention. We had n no unexpected admits to the ICU or step-down unit, so basically nobody nobody failed medical treatment. So it's a lot of it's a lot of grief saved for the patient, a lot of complications avoided, and for for the institution, a whole lot of money saved.